Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello everyone and thank you for coming to the channel. And TMZ did their very best, did their due diligence and brought us none other than an exclusive of Janet Jackson Loses Audio at Essence Festival caps off weekend issues. I'm like, I know that's right. I'm capping off over here with my mic going in and out. Oh, and it's not that old to be doing that. It's Yeti. Woo. But anyway, we got keep on pressing through. Hopefully my family members on YouTube can hear me these last generated videos I've put out. But yes, Janet was one of the headliners. And we go into the article where it says Janet Jackson was not impervious to technical difficulties that plagued Essence Festival losing audio midway through her performance and powering through it to kill it regardless. The singer was one of the big headliners at the New Orleans concert series this weekend at Caesars Superdome where tons of, of huge stars performed in an event comparable to Coachella. Coachella. Uh, what was also comparable was the auto issues often experienced in a live show. No exceptions, no exceptions for Janet, unfortunately, because during her set, her mic seemed to have cut out while she was in the middle of either talking or singing. Seen here in the video obtained for TMZ. Okay. The good news is that the little hiccup appeared to go mostly unnoticed and the rest of the Janet's time on stage was a smash hit as she rustled through hit after hit after hit for more than an hour leaving fans more than satisfied with the tunes and choreography mm -hmm. they said Janet Jackson set SFS off I really hope she hits the road and gives us one last tour now, my people, just sitting in the side, my side boy. Janet ain't gonna never retire. Kind of, she's gonna be making, you know, singles, or she might make a little studio album or whatnot. But the, the music industry doesn't let you retire, and that's one of the unfortunate uh, non perks that you would like from being in, well, being an individual contributor to, you know, what you love to do, which is entertain. But uh, as an individual, collaborative person with a big organization such as the music industry, she don't get a chance to retire, please. Oh, look at Patti LaBelle. She was at the Essence Fest, and she damn near 80 years old, okay? Just saying, he got Gladys Knight. She's out there still doing her thing. Hell, you got the Isley Brothers. They're number two of them. And they still trying to strum a little hit here and there, okay? We're going back to the article. It says, now it's worth mentioning. There seems to be quite a bit of sound issues throughout the past couple of days of acts, including some complaints about Haley and Chloe Bailey's set, with folks saying their levels were off and that they sound sounded kind of funky to the live audience. I wonder how they sound kind of funky. How you gonna tell when you're on stage and all the people in the audience just, you know, cheering your name and everything? So did you did they see the displeasement on the um uh the crowd's face or something? That that just bewilders me how they can say they can hear that the crowd's not liking what uh they're doing on stage unless they were chanting, we can't hear you, we can't hear you, okay? But if they didn't do that, I find it very odd that they would be able to notice whether the uh, fans are there, uh, viewers of the show are there and they can't hear them, okay? But anyway, the audio were the least of some people's concern, though even more viewers at home were pissed at Hula only live streamed their very last song, a recurring theme for the festival, namely, who subscribers watching on Hulu actually got to see. So they, huh, that, that's a messed up stuff. You mean to tell me that they only let the uh, subscribers 
see the show and the rest of the people that were just holding on. Oh, yes, they had to continue to hold on because they didn't get it. Okay, that's funky of them. But anyway, going back to the article, it said this was perhaps most notable during Friday's show when Nicki Minaj was the headliner for the night, even though her performance didn't end up making it on Hulu broadcast, Angela Yee, who was on hosting duties uh, that night, noted they weren't going to be able to show Nikki's set for audience audiences at home, citing circumstances beyond our control. Nicki Minaj did indeed perform, and she aired out frustrations, whatever was going on uh, on BTS. Okay. It says, in the light of Nikki's mishaps, as well as other artists here and there, many were daring Hulu and Essence to screw up on Janet's set, juggling, saying there'll be problems if they did. Well, they did end up screwing the pooch a little bit for JJ after all, but no harm, no foul. She carried on like a pro and appears to have put on a hell of a number for everyone. Hopefully they can get it together for the final night. Okay, let me see if I can play a little bit of Janet Jackson's concert that she was uh, uh, view, let, uh, giving out to the fans. I'm going to play it just on both of Deal. I love Janet Jackson. Ooh, yes, last time I saw her in concert, it was before my daughter came in the world. And she was conceived that night. Because I was out with the girls, came home, feeling good, had wonderful sex with my husband then. And she was conceived, um, probably was September she came, I believe, in 90. She was born in 91. So, yeah, it was in 1990. When she did Black Cat, ah, that girl was amazing. But, you know, she was taught by an amazing brother, which was Janet, brother uh, Michael Jackson. So, yes, honey, yes. If I was your girl, the things I'd do to you. Yeah, <laughs> I just love that. That was a, 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 a velvet rope tour. But either or, the girl is fat. just choreography she puts down, which I know that she can't really get it that way since she's in her mid fifties, maybe the latter fifties. I think she was about fifty four. I think she's fifty six or seven. But <laughs> woo, she she has shortened some of her choreography because it's so high powerful. How uh, we call it? Um, highly energetic girl you can't mm -mm. when you hit your feet this you can look good but trying to keep up with a high volume high paced choreography girl you be need your oxygen tank somewhere off, off the stage but very close to you where you can just kind of walk <laughs> to it in a hurry if you need it to I have noticed on some of the concerts that I've seen her perform recently, she does a lot of walking and her backup dances do a lot of her choreography and she just picks up on certain parts uh, and display them, you know, for uh, our viewing. But she don't do a lot of what she used to do when she was in her 30s and somewhat of her 40s, I believe. Girlfriend was bad in her 20s and 30s. <laughs> that's that rhythm nation too. I think that's what it was called. 
uh, the resignation tour. I, I can't remember because it's, you know, it ain't that far back, but farther than I can recall certain events, okay? But that's all I had for Miss Jetta Jackson. Miss Jackson, if you're nasty, her, um, her little uh, performance that TMZ exclusively brought out on their platform. But I'll see y'all next video, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.